Hello students, my favorite piece of music of all time is Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony. Not because I love the music, although I do, but because the story is so important and so meaningful to me. The question is, is this symphony celebratory or not? There's a great book, Symphony for the City of the Dead, which is geared toward uh, high school age students, written by M.T. Anderson and suggested to me by one of our students, which has been a great read in setting Dmit Dmitry Shostakovich's life in the 1930s and the struggles that happened in Russia. The book describes really three primary people that affected Shostakovich's uh, artistic output. That is Tsar Nicholas II, Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin. Nicholas II was the last of the czars in Russia before the Russian Revolution. And you can imagine Russia being an empire or imperial Russia, sort of like a king where the czar was passed, the czarship was passed down through uh, generations. The Bolsheviks and the Russian Revolution happened around 1917 or so, or the 19-teens. And Vladimir Lenin uh, helped create communist Russia, uh, Russia that was socialist in so many ways. Um, in fact, they renamed the city of St. Petersburg, Leningrad, after Vladimir Lenin. Lenin died and the Bolsheviks changed and Joseph Stalin came to power. But Stalin, uh, even though a dedicated communist, really changed the face of Russian government. Famous throughout Russia were these cars called the Black Marias, which were the symbols, so to speak, of the Great Purge. Stalin himself was very concerned about consolidating power and was very skeptical. We argue, too, that Stalin was a little um, nervous and perhaps paranoid, afraid that all those around him would take over his power. And so he created this Great Purge in which he actually found ways to abduct members of his own government, random members of society, artists, musicians, political leaders, military leaders, to the point where he sent so many people to work prisons in Siberia called gulags or had them killed. So everyone in Russia was afraid of being labeled an enemy of the state by Joseph Stalin and nobody, including his close friends, were immune to the possibility of being abducted in one of these cars and then sent to a work camp to die or sent to be killed right away. So Shostakovich himself became under fire. Um, there was an article written in a magazine called, or sorry, a newspaper called Pravda. And the article was likely written by someone close to Stalin or Stalin himself. And many people think that because the article is poorly written. And it's well known that Stalin was a poorly educated person. About this opera that Shostakovich wrote called Lady Macbeth of Metsank. And the opera was really popular for two years. And then finally Stalin went to go see it. And he was um, hated it, apparently. And he left at intermission. And he then wrote or inspired someone to write this article saying that Shostakovich was borderline an enemy of the state because his music wasn't patriotic enough or there was too much violence, too much murder. It was too loud. At the same time, Shostakovich is writing his fourth symphony. Uh, it was being rehearsed. And then finally, Shostakovich and the orchestra pulled it because it was not patriotic enough. The music at this time needed to push Soviet ideals and needed to push the worker as being king. And that was the basic of, basis of communism in Russia. Shostakovich was brought in for questioning and he was about to be arrested and probably killed until the officer who was about to arrest him was himself arrested by, Shost by Stalin. It just goes to show what a circular, crazy situation Russia was. Everybody was extremely nervous. So Shostakovich then had to write a fifth symphony to appease the government. It had to be happy sounding. It had to be patriotic. It had to make Stalin happy. Now, Stalin, maybe not very cultural, not very educated, to know what happiness was probably was something in major, or something that sounded nice. Shostakovich's fifth symphony, the first movement, has this ta-da! We remember back to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony.
the anxiety of influence continues even into the 1930s. The music, ta-da, ta-da, starts just like in Beethoven, but it's stopped dead in its tracks by these three soft sounds, da, da, da. And this is sort of a death knell, a sound of death, a sound of stopping that occurs throughout the piece. You hear the da, da, da softly in the strings. There is this ta-da again in the orchestra when this video clip starts, and it's killed. Boom, 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 by extremely bombastic and extremely loud brass chords. Again, the three hits, the three sounds of death, boom, 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 return. <laughs>
we have to wonder why Shostakovich starts melodies throughout the symphony, but then immediately interrupts them, changes the meaning of the music by adding those three notes of death, the, the sounds of pain. And it's, if there's any question, we can look to the third movement. The third movement is actually the longest movement of the symphony. And it is just sad. It's symbolic of the Russian people suffering from poverty, from pain, from their family members suddenly disappearing, from not knowing that if they too could disappear, if Stalin was suddenly upset with them, if their way of life was totally changed. When you hear the third movement, I think you can literally hear the sighs of the Russian people. You can hear them crying in masses. And apparently when this symphony premiered, the audience was moved to tears during this movement because they recognized their own suffering inside the music. The question was, did Stalin recognize it? Probably not. We think he wasn't that deep. <laughs> movement makes this symphony famous. I turn it over again to Michael Tilson Thomas in his documentary Keeping Score with the San Francisco Symphony who describes the ending of this piece. Finally, with a great deal of extra shoving and hauling, we make it to D major, but the process is painful and difficult. ready for our happy ending. It's all fine until we go a few bars further to the moment where the piece's final cadence should be securing that happy ending goal. To do that, we'd expect to hear something like what we hear at the end of Mahler's Third Symphony. Had Shostakovich wanted to do that, it might have sounded something like this. a happy ending. But of course, you know that that's not the way the piece ends. The real ending is this. What a difference. Just as in the first movement, it all comes down to the expressive power of one altered note. Not be natural, which would have confirmed the happy major version of the scale, but be flat, 
which takes us back to the sad minor version. But after so much time making our way to major, why at the last moment look back to minor? I think it's to tell us that the happy harmonies of the ending are utterly false. What's really happening is that one last time we are being stomped into submission by that same dead end. noticed in that blip of music that the sound is not happy. Perhaps Stalin was convinced that it was made happy, um, but there's something very uncomfortable about how this ends. There's something off about it, and when you listen to it again, you'll decide. But you'll notice, too, there was many A's over and over again played in the strings. Da, 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 da. This constant sound. There's like about 250 of those repeated sounds where the string players almost feel like their arms are going to fall off because they're playing the exact same note over and over and over again. And there are some theories to this. Shostakovich never directly explained why he wrote the music this way. Clearly, it's supposed to be, on one hand, celebratory to appease Stalin. But there's something, again, that's off about it. The A's, some people think, were la, 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 which is sort of a name of a woman that Shostakovich loved, who didn't love him in return. She went off to another country and married another man. So it could be that, that Shostakovich is, is emotionally crying out and longing for a lost love that never happened to him. He also says that it could be re referring to me, 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 talking about my suffering. I have a darker view, and the view is <laughs> that the repeated notes dee, da, 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 symbolize the masses of Russia. And they're with their fists, they're pounding against the walls. And as the brass players build these chords, which are supposed to sound celebratory, but on the other hand aren't, as the brass and the winds build these chords, they're building the walls that are, are closing in all of the Russian people. The walls are getting higher and higher and they're suffocating the Russian people. And every A, da, 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 are the Russian people banging against the walls, begging to be let out. But of course, the symphony ends with a gigantic big boom at the end. And so nothing happens to them. <laughs>
interpretation is what makes me feel a personal connection to this music. Other people have slightly different interpretations to it. Some people, like I've said, think it's just wonderful and beautiful, and there's nothing wrong with it. Perhaps Stalin felt that way, because Shostakovich, spoiler alert, was allowed to live. He wasn't killed after the Fifth Symphony, um, even though he was threatened to be killed. So, some people believe that Shostakovich was crying out for a lost love. I tend to believe that he was commenting on the sufferings of his people. But that's the beauty of really deep music, that... This music, on one hand, sounds a certain way, but the meaning is so different to those who listen to it. And I hope, students, that as you go forward and listen to music in the rest of your lives and career, that you recognize that as you sit in the hall and listen to the orchestra, or as you go to a show and you listen to the band that's playing or the artist that's performing, that you have a personal interpretation, but the person next to you may be feeling something totally different, and that is the beauty of music. So, is it celebratory? Is it tongue-in-cheek? Does it mention suffering? Does it mention happiness? Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony provides something for everyone.